Uh, yes, sir. We are live now. We can start now. Uh, all right. So, good evening, friends. I think uh, this was to be the uh, last lecture in our uh, fellowship series, and I had planned actually to finish two topics, but uh, I'm going to do neck femur. I have unfortunately got some last minute guests at home, so. If I don't finish Montage today, I'll take an extra class, but I'll complete it uh, this weekend or something. Yeah, so just forgive me for that. But we'll start with fracture neck femur. Uh, all right. Everybody can see. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So just a moment. I, I, all right. So all right. You can see the full screen, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we are going to talk about fracture neck femur in children today, and uh, you have to understand this very important statement, which was made by Kanali. Hip fractures in children are of interest, like you all wanted this, but it is because of the frequency of complications rather than the incidence of the fracture. So practically, you will not see a fracture neck femur, maybe one, one, one in six months or maybe a couple of cases in a year. It is not really very common as a fracture to see in pediatric trauma. But when you get one, the chances that you will get a complication are very high. And if you look at the world series, the largest series, those have been published, right? Ratliff series, avian 42%, coxavara 20%, premature facial closure 15%, 10% non-union, delayed union 24%. And even in Canale's own series, 43% avian, 21% coxavara, early facial closure in about 60% and non-union in about 7%. So we must all know that what is the vascular anatomy because avian is such a large or an important uh, part of our um, complication rate that we see. And uh, uh, what we need to know is that how does the blood supply go to the immature head of the female. So you must understand that in the immature skeleton, there is one a growth plate in between the head and the metaphysis and second the ligamentum teres is an important structure which gives you a lot of blood in the growing age we all know that in perthes there is a transition from about seven eight years till the metaphyseal circulation really takes over so the lateral epiphyseal injury uh, vessel which is the branch of the medial circumflex is actually the most important branch it's also called the retinacular branch which gives off a leash of vessels small vessels which bypass the physis so it comes around the neck of the femur there is a lateral ascending artery it crosses the physis not through the bone outside the bone through the retinacular flap and then they penetrate it at the base and that's extremely vulnerable to injury at that particular age group so it's very important for us to understand the vascular anatomy now this is the vascular anatomy the A, the A part in this diagram is the lateral epiphyseal vessel. And you can see the C is the ascending branch and the retinacular vessels. Whereas this is the metaphyseal vessel, which is actually because of the facial plate, you will not get a metaphyseal circulation to the head. But the most of the ep epiphyseal circulation comes from the lateral vessel, that the lateral epiphyseal ascending artery. And if the fracture is at B, which is trans cervical, you are cutting off most of the blood supply to this region, right? The classification for fracture neck femur <coughs> has been described by Delbet. And Delbet has given four types. Type 1 is a transfacial separation. Type 2 is an intracapsular fracture neck femur. Type 3 is a basitrochantric fracture. And type 4 is an intertrochantric fracture. So let's look at let's look at these fractures one by one, and I'll give you some tips and tricks on the way. So this type, the type one fracture neck femur, is really rare. 
and there is very little evidence or literature about a type 1 injury and we have to really see whether we can improve results because it's very close to the blood vessels and very often you get avm so the non displaced fractures you can treat them just by a spica but the displaced fractures close reduction and spica was done in the past but at present close reduction with pinning is preferred more more literature says that pinning is the way to hold that fracture but the results are generally poor and they are catastrophic especially with so i'll give you some examples so this is a one year old child who had a fall from the small crib that the child was placed into and child refused to move the limb but otherwise was comfortable there was some movement but on attempted motion one leg was painful now the surgeon took this x ray and this seemed innocuous or it seemed normal okay till you took a frog leg lateral view what did the frog leg view show you can see on the left side that there is a displacement between the head and the metaphyseal region so this was a left sided transphyseal separation yeah now i don't know why they got a ct scan done this patient came late to me but this child was subjected to a ct as it is nowadays everybody gets a ct or an mri especially when you don't understand anything and this is how the child came okay and it was still mobile so what i did was we did an arthrogram and we did a close reduction what you needed was simply a gentle internal rotation uh, internal rotation with internal rotation the leg came back into normal position we just passed two smooth pins i did a dye study you can see that arthrogram which is nicely showing you the contour of the head and the alignment with Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Now you can hear me. Can you hear me, please? Yes, sir. Now I can hear you. Yeah, somebody's microphone is on. Can you shut it off, please? Hello. Yeah. so i am giving am i i am connected to my phone so if there's a phone call no sometimes it gets disconnected then i'll come back after i disconnect the phone call now you are able to hear me hello yes sir yeah clear yeah, 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 so yeah clearly yeah yeah so so this was what was done wires were removed at 6 months follow up it looked pretty good but over a period of time most of these fractures if you follow them long enough this is again a type 1 where reduction and pinning has been done with a spica but over a period of time you will get some kind of complication the longer you follow them up you will see a growth arrest now this is a growth arrest in this child which has led to a coxa breva and a slight coxa vera a type 1 fracture dislocation is where the head lies outside the socket now this is impossible to reduce closed so you have to do an open reduction to put that head back and then this child was given a spica <coughs> sorry a thomas pin <coughs> for about 3 weeks and then the wires were pulled out and spica was given and eventually again the same thing at 8 years we'll get the growth arrest so be aware that a type 1 injury can get avn and almost 100% of them will get a growth arrest because it's a epiphyseal injury which is displaced more so if it is a fractured dislocation that means the head is lying outside now the second type is the delbit type 2 which is the common injury that you and i will see in our practice this is more common 50% of all, all pediatric hip fractures will be delbit 2 and this is the most common cause of avn also 50% and 3/4 fourths will be displaced okay so if you look at again let okay can you hear me yes sir Hello. yes sir yeah okay 
<laughs> sorry for that there is a phone call persistent phone call okay so lamb ratliff and canale okay and they saw that initially for undisplaced fractures lamb and ratliff used cast just a spica but for displaced fractures ratliff and canale advised internal fixation and more often than not even for undisplaced fractures for the fear of preventing dislocation or displacement it's important that we give internal fixation and internal fixation is the treatment of choice currently okay rarely is only cast used but if you are doing it you have to follow it closely for displacement any doubt you treat as displaced fracture and fix it and cannulated screws avoiding the physis are the choice of treatment but stability is the first priority so in the screws have poor hold it is okay to sacrifice the physis in compromise situation rather than have an unstable so you can go across and i'll come to that in a few moments most of them if they are displaced may need open reduction because the most important thing to prevent avn is accurate reduction and adequate stability okay these are the two largest determinants of avn remember in your practice it is not the timing of surgery which is important it is the accuracy of reduction and it is the adequacy of stability okay undisplaced less complications have been noted but outcomes are variable so these are the questions that you will face when you have a fracture neck femur which is displaced should you open it or do your close reduction at the night if he comes now at 9 o'clock should it be open or closed what approach you will take anterior medial watson jones or smith peterson are you going to give us spica what implant should you use should you do an arthrotomy and should you cross the fascis so these are the variables which you are always worried about so this is a 10 year old who had a fracture with a fall in school the complete treatment was close reduction fixation hematoma evacuation and spica so remember that for the fear of committing an act of omission okay you should not shy away from doing a hematoma evacuation it can be just sliding a periosteum or a small cobs elevator intracapsular when you do the fixation and decompressing the hematoma if you are going to do a close reduction or aspirating the hematoma but you must make some attempt to decompress the intracapsular tamponade second is even with cannulated screws please remember that it is not side stable so you will end up in older children above 8 with angulation delayed union varus or a non union if you don't use a spica right so just doing cannulated screw is not adequate close reduction can be done if you have a pediatric fracture table but i prefer to do it on a radiolucent top with the lead better method 90 degree flexion traction adduct it and then circumduct it into abduction internotation always remember like any other place avoid repeated attempts to get a close reduction you can try joystick method or then proceed to a open reduction which may be more expeditious if you are going to do an open reduction the higher fractures use a smith peterson for the lower fractures towards the intracapsular or basi cervical you can do an anterolateral watson jones approach just the planes are different you just need to familiarize yourself with the planes do a small capsulotomy decompress the hematoma and with your finger get a proper reduction and then fix it the quality of reduction should be judged ap and lateral by the lovell's s curves okay a smooth curve without a kink is necessary and you must avoid varus and you must avoid extension right so retroversion or extension and varus is not acceptable this is the type 2 which is displaced is there another way when you are not getting a close reduction and that as i said is a percutaneous leverage technique so i like leverage technique in very often in many places because it helps me avoid a major surgery so you can put a small k wire on a t handle directly intracapsular 
and try to lever the fragment into a correct position and then pass your stabilizing k wire so this is what was done intrafocal close reduction hematoma evacuation then fixation with couple of cancellous screws and you can see this cancellous screws i had put and then i gave a spica and even with the spica when i removed the spica at 4 to 6 weeks i found that one screw have was actually not in the correct position and it was going posterior but fortunately luckily for me it healed well at 3 months i could remove this implant and i followed this patient for long term at 1 year 3 years and 5 years fortunately he remains healed well you can see there is a little elongation of neck actually <clears throat> like a coxa valga and he had apparent true lengthening of a centimeter but there was no avn and uh, the union was solid so we just observed him and he is doing okay so the second point is that the treatment of fracture neck femur is emergent it is not urgent what does that mean <laughs> doing a 3 am surgery with a substandard staff and inadequate equipment is not recommended you are more likely to do a bad job rather than doing a really good job so the next available routine theater with your a team first thing in the morning at 7 am will be a better choice more important than the timing is accurate reduction and stable fixation to prevent avn how does one judge stability you can see this vertical fracture treated by cancellous screws the surgeon thought he is doing a good job because he has not crossed the physis but look what happened within some time the screws have cut out this happens routinely so you should realize that in pediatrics the screw fixation should be posterior and inferior towards the calcar now this is the correct configuration that has been advocated by lundquist where you will put the screws closer to the calcar which is postero medial rather than central placement or anterior placement so make sure they are posterior and inferior that is medial more medial towards the calcar rather than placing them elsewhere and my preference is to give a side plate okay and i'll show you how i don't use a spica in older children at all only in young kids less than 4 or 5 will i put a spica because older kids don't tolerate the spica very well so this is an example where you do a neck femur you put couple of cancellous screws and a spica which is a wise thing to do putting a large implant is not the solution you can look at this somebody thought that he must give stability if they put a dhs and you can see the staples are not yet removed and the dhs is cut out all right and then yeah they had to revise it on the third or the fourth day such a heavy implant with an implant cut out is not a good thing to have they put multiple screws now 1 2 3 4 5 screws again not a good thing to do that got infected and had avn so i had to remove the implants i kept one screw which was inferior medial and i put that time this is an old case 10 12 years ago so i just used something called as uh, we had we didn't have stimulan then these were the hydroxyapatite crystals with antibiotic which i had inserted <coughs> and they remain there for a long time and i'll show you the follow up later so my 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 way of treating children is to use a side plate in the form of a recon plate or a dcp so when i reduce the fracture superiorly i will first put a single 4 mm cannulated screw but inferior screw i will always put through a side plate once my reduction is good and if i have some stability with one screw the second screw goes through the plate and i will put two screws onto the shaft so that there is a good lateral bending support and this is a more stable construct and this can be treated with a long leg knee brace you need not give a spica and you can have a really good outcome this is another example fracture neck femur one screw outside first screw second screw through the plate and a side plate with a shaft fixation yet another example an older child one cancellous screw 
another cancellous screw through a DCP and couple of screws on the shaft, and they do really well. So depending on the size of the bone, you can use a DCP or a recon plate or a, uh, some kind of a side plate, and make sure that the diameter of your screw is also good. This construct can be used when you are trying to avoid crossing the physis in type two fractures, right? Where you are trying to save the physis, but in case your stability is in doubt, go ahead and cross the physis. It will cause less of a problem than a non-union or an implant cutout. Okay, so this is the result with this patient. Now this ten-year-old child, you see this fracture, and the surgeon has very wisely crossed the line, that the physis line. So if you are having a decent reduction and you have comminution. instead of pins and screws go ahead and cross the physial plate if you are going to use only screws and not use the side plate they will give you far better stability than putting just screws short of the physis you can also use the old this is a colleague of mine who used the small uh, sp pin and plate this nobody i think is not even available now but we had an implant t so this is a very old time fixation but the importance for this is that the the pin is the sp pin which is crossing the physis which is a smooth pin it's not threaded okay so that is safer if so if you want to cross physis you can put a non threaded pin <coughs> and you can put screws which are not crossing the physis to prevent growth arrest today you have this ao pediatric hip plate which is available for fracture neck femur they have locked screws okay locked screws don't give compression so one screw you can see is a cancellous screw non locked which has been used and then just locked screws for better stability and a side plate this the ao has come up with but unfortunately the cost of this plate is about 50000 rupees so it's not really affordable to everybody and uh, we have indian versions now but even those are 10 12000 <coughs> so you can use the simple jugard like i did with a side plate which is just a dcp much cheaper okay now an adolescent neck femur is not the same as a 3 year old fracture neck femur though both are intracapsular right what is different in an adolescent age group 9 10 and above the bone is thicker and the periosteum is also adequate the neck is larger so you have to have a higher energy injury for creating a fracture neck femur so that causes more comminution especially posterior comminution so heavy child older child you will definitely use a different classification and that is pavel's classification lesser growth is remaining remember that 10 12 13 hardly anything is remaining for growth growth at the head end all growth is at the lower femur so you can cross the physis with impunity and make sure that you are using a strong implant so a pediatric dhs becomes the implant of choice in the adolescent age group so this is a 16 year old boy which was treated with a cancellous screw and a pediatric dhs <coughs> this will give you absolute stability without the need for a spica so what are the implant options for adequate stability cannulated screws allow compression but poor control for varus because no side plate sliding hip screw with an anti rotational screw gives compression with weight bearing but consider the pavel's angle a locking side plate is a stable fixation it limits varus collapse but it doesn't really allow true compression because of the locking nature of the screw okay so that is about fracture type 2 the type 3 and type 4 are cervical trochanteric and intertrochanteric so as you move away from the physis healing is much better and the chances of mal union are higher than non union all right so lesser complications implant choices again younger you can conserve just put a k wire with a spica more than 6 years you can use a method of fixation which i will show you now this is a 12 year old a basic trochanteric injury what was done was a pediatric dhs and that is how it went on to heal but a younger child with a displaced intertrochanteric fracture like i said healing is good so what you can do is percutaneous leverage and just a k wire 
from the GT to the shaft and a spica. Okay, and this sealed very well. So this is one way you can do it. And this is what I wanted to show you. I think I, I may have mentioned this earlier. Uh, how I fix with a recon, uh, sorry, your one third tubular plate. All right. So the cervical trochanteric or subtrochanteric fractures, one third tubular plate slotted in like a can, uh, angle blade plate, and that can give you a very nice fixation for an intertrochanteric or a subtrochanteric fracture like this. And they do really, really well. This is a few examples of intertrochanteric, subtrochanteric fractures treated thus. Some people have used external fixators for intertrochanteric, basitrochanteric fractures. And that has also done pretty well. So you have many ways and you can see that all of them are working. So inherently the basi and intertrochanteric fractures, your job is to prevent a varus collapse and malunion. Okay, otherwise they will all unite pretty well and non-union rates are very, very low. What about complications? Let's talk about complications because that is what I said is more important in fracture neck fever than the incidence. AVN is the most common and the most devastating complication. Overall rate is about 45%. It's been reported 100% with type 1 dislocation. Type 2, as I said, 45 to 50%. Type 3, lesser, 20-25%. Type 4, less than 10%. Okay, so you can see this. Fracture neck femur fixed adequately. Looks okay, but over one year follow-up, you see an osteonecrosis and collapse. Now the question always is, it, is it the displacement or is it the tamponade by hematoma? What does literature have to say? AVN was always higher when the initial displacement was higher. So if you have a high displacement, okay, Ratliff, Canale, both of them showed about 50% AVN rates. Undisplaced or minimally displaced, it is as low as 8%. And Gerber showed that 30% AVN in spite of capsulotomy. So what is present? Something which is beyond your control <coughs> was primary displacement. If the primary displacement is higher, it tells you that it is a high energy injury and you have to counsel the family about higher rate of AVN. As an act of always do a capsulotomy, drain that hematoma, but it is not that every time you drain the hematoma means you will not get AVN. You may still get AVN. Okay. So that is the hematoma as seen on uh, MRI. Boyd Z was the one who wrote about the hematoma with a capsulotomy or aspiration. And in his series, he said he found lesser AVN. Okay. So if you are doing an open reduction, not a problem. You are draining the hematoma. Otherwise, slide a small periosteum along the neck anteriorly, like you put an antiversion guide wire in adults and just go into intracapsular and allow that hematoma to drain or aspirate it. So his series of 11 cases, it was just 11 cases. So Boyd Z said no AVN because he did evacuation and he gave credit to the hematoma evacuation. But other papers have not concurred with him. Okay. Foringer had 6% AVN. Those were even after decompression. And as Gerber showed, 30% AVN. Nicole and Cole, 7 out of 23, 30% AVN. 2 out of 9, 22% in undisplaced. So displacement clearly has higher AVN. 6 were not decompressed, 10 were decompressed. The rate of AVN came down. So they said that, okay, the rate of AVN can be lower if you do decompression. So when you are operating, rather than not do it, why not do it? If at all, it will benefit. But it is no guarantee against TV and remember that. So this Moon and Melman's landmark paper, they said that Delbit type 1A, 100% AVN, 1B without dislocation, 38%, type 2, 28%, type 3, 18%, type 4, 5%. Overall incidence of 30%. And they did a logistic regression analysis. And what did they find? 25 cases, 3, 6 out of 25 cases, and a meta analysis of 316 neck femur fractures. So, what they said was the fracture type and age were the only significant predictors of AVN. 
on an average older children were 1.14 times more likely to get avn for each year of increasing age type 1 to type 3 fractures obviously 15 times 6 times and 4 times higher to develop again and according to delbit class we already told you 38 28 and 18% so the determinant of avn is older age higher displacement and stability and quality of reduction it is not timing of surgery and it is not hematoma evacuation but you must do urgent not urgent emergent but earliest possible surgery and at surgery decode the hematoma as a good practice habit okay but you should know that age and displacement are the larger predictors okay so the greater the displacement greater the risk of vascular disruption and the chance of revascularization are better when you do an accurate reduction so that is the importance of quality of reduction to allow the metaphyseal vessels to grow in okay again a paper in corr which showed that neck femur in pediatric patients no relationship between decompression and avn they said lesser time to surgery less than 12 hours lower avn rate but better quality of reduction lower avn rate. okay so in your practice remember earliest possible surgery most perfect reduction good stability additional side plate if required and counsel if the age is higher and displacement is more and always decompress the hematoma okay so these are the determinants of avn types of avn we have seen that it can be complete or partial or you can have even neck avn what is the treatment of avn best form of treatment is really not known results may no may be no better than leaving it alone the aim is to maintain motion and if the if there is a penetration of implant remove that internal fixation so i'll show you a few examples of avn being treated what are the options people have tried core decompression fibula grafting systemic bisphosphonate oral or iv we nowadays give or believe that we should give intraosseous bisphosphonate because oral bisphosphonate will not get absorbed or the levels are reached after about 4 weeks and they may not reach the dead bone iv bisphosphonate again has the similar kind of a problem because when there is avn there is no blood flow to that region so how does the bisphosphonate reach there so it's uh, nowadays more popular that we put a large bore needle and with a syringe pump under pressure inject zoantric acid directly into the avn segment late reconstruction may be possible after the avn has completely resolved and you might sometime need excision arthroplasty so this is an example of a 11 year old girl treated closed fracture underwent avn now this is a large bore needle connected to a syringe pump and was injected with this phosphonate implants were removed and that dead bone was with this phosphonate that prevents osteoclastic activity and collapse of the head and allows time for the head to revascularize the 5 year old 2013 like i showed you earlier this was his situation the cut out of the dhs the revision which was done within a week the infection which i revised this is when he came to me i removed that implant and i kept this on now as he became older he had a stiff knee we tried somebody did manipulation and got a supracondylar fracture here okay eventually that healed up the head healed up the avn resolved and all he was remaining with with a coxa valga so he had a very high neck shaft angle with a healed fracture and residual avn with some stiffness and impingement 2018 he underwent adhesiolysis we did an open capsulotomy i removed the anterolateral bump which was impinging and this is what was done i shaved off the bump i did a hepsian surgery the screw we left it in and that length was the coxa valga was compensating for the shortening so i did not do a varus osteotomy and i did not try to do any correction there 
but i just took away the impingement and this is that boy at maturity now walking pretty well with equal lens okay i could have added a varus for better containment but he had such excellent function that i didn't want to do anything and he is doing absolutely all activities playing football etc so he might still get early arthritis but compared to what he started with this is a really long 15 year follow up of how a complication has been managed this is another example of avn after a type 1 injury where nothing was done and over a period of time you can see how the head remodels so sometimes just wait and watch restore range of motion may be adequate this is an 11 year old a type 3 fracture treated somewhere else in maharashtra southern maharashtra this is what was done post surgery a couple of screws were there there was avn typically in type 2 screws were removed and this was the situation when they came to me so when we removed the screws through the screw track i infused solantric acid in the track and waited till the avn ran its course of healing over a period of time the head became better and all we were left with was an anterolateral bump here the rest of the head had healed avn was now stable so i decided i must do a safe surgical dislocation and correct this and do a neck lengthening so this is what we did for her safe surgical dislocation this is the head congruency i took away the bump and i did a distalization of the greater trochanter which is fixed here and you can see that neck length has been decreased because of that this is her function and she started walking pretty well initially she was quite guarded and had some stiffness and pain but she was very very persistent with her physiotherapy you can see this side is not really perfect but she was able to squat pain reduced and when she came back later on she had absolutely superb result so that is how you tackle avn let it heal try to prevent and what remains treat the impingement that will help you <coughs> coxa vara is another problem if there is a poor fixation or poor stability it may heal but it heals with collapse about 30% incidence and treatment of that is simpler you just do a valgus osteotomy so this was a partially healed sort of a sud arthrosis coxa vara non union so what we did was a valgus osteotomy and fixation without opening the fracture and i used a dcp which i pre bent it and this is how it healed this was functionally normal non union is again a problem which we encountered in our country not much has been written about it in the western literature because they don't get neglected or long uh, uh, massage cases they usually see non union when there is failure of fixation okay or when you don't use fixation if you use internal fixation non union should be lesser you have to treat it with valgus osteotomy bone graft or a combination now this is a 13 year old girl delayed presentation you can see the overriding with coxa vara but ununited lot of osteoporosis so i treated her with an in situ stabilization single screw there and then we did a subtrochanteric valgus osteotomy and fixed it with a bent plate this is how it was fixed and this is how it healed so in situ screw valgus fixation healed in 3 months no avn full range of motion 10 year old child hip trauma treated initially in a thomas splint can you believe obviously not going to heal non union with a gap somebody tried in situ just couple of screws obviously not going to work second accident so remove that and then a valgus osteotomy dynamic hip screw with grafting and that is how it healed again a gap non union in an adolescent this is something which i demonstrated in ganga operative course they gave me this case <coughs> neglected 14 months old non union with changes of avn in the head okay so sudathrus is here so in situ stabilization with a screw then a fibula graft and then a subtrochanteric valgus osteotomy you can see this fibula 
you can see the lock plate and this this is the in situ screw to start off with this was at 3 months and then that went on to heal pretty nicely a late presentation again a primary valgus osteotomy can be done when you have a vertical fracture line in a older child this is another case where a midnight surgery was done by residents okay so they did this they tried to be correct and not cross the physis in spite of an older child so the boss came in the morning and he said no you must cross the physis this is possible so they went and put longer screws i got infected and the whole thing just fell apart okay no side plate was used now this after the infection was controlled and the implants were removed this was the situation so what was done is a valgus osteotomy so this is how you plan you put a superior screw the inferior screw is dhs if there is a large gap there then you can use a fibular strut as a bone bridge which can give stability and then a subtrochanteric valgus osteotomy and then you use a dhs at 135 and translate the distal fragment laterally okay this is how you fix it and this is how it heals so this is the example fibula graft you can see superiorly a dhs inferiorly valgus done lateral translation and this is how it was fixed this is immediate post op this is 2 years post op beautiful healing complete restoration of neck shaft angle full range of motion no avn okay so we can definitely salvage bad situations by simple techniques taral my friend has devised a small software and a jig okay he's got a 3d printed jig which can help you plan your osteotomy and put the screws in the correct position this is an example where he has done a 3d ct planning <coughs> and this is his osteotomy sometimes you get pathological fractures this was an insensate fracture uh, that child had no sensitivity to do pain and he got a fracture neck femur and was walking on it he didn't realize there is a fracture so i put a calcar screw and a top fibula because the neck was missing and i put him in a thomas splint and i wasn't sure whether this is going to heal but to my surprise it it took four and a half months but it consolidated and healed so well so it's not that you have to give up hope and it can do very very well without any complications another example of a pathological fracture neck femur after osteomyelitis valgus osteotomy you can see after the surgery the head has gone into avn okay but after some days the head started revascularizing then we did a distalization of the greater trochanter and then the head restored itself and at maturity this is how the hip looks and this is how the child has functioned so we have written about this i guess all of you if you have not read it you must read this paper which i have published in jbjs as an invited guest like paper current concepts on non union in pediatric neck femur fractures if you have a non union it can be either because of failure of fixation or it is a late presentation in our country evaluate if it's a late presentation how much neck is available and rule out a pathological fracture if there is a big gap use a reconstruction with a fibula strut add a valgus osteotomy and fix it with a side plate if it's a failure of fixation because of inappropriate or implant choice is wrong or mechanics are not right rule out infection remove the implant here the bone stock is good just do in situ stabilization with a valgus and a stable side plate and you should do well all right and best practices for preventing non union adequacy of reduction is the key stable fixation is important add a side plate for 3 4 especially and two fractures children less than 8 cannulated screw but spica is mandatory older than 8 side implant side plate is important if the neck is resolved fibula is an excellent choice as a graft it gives stability and augments biology good calcar contact is important valgus osteotomy especially with powell which is vertical and delayed presentations and always in vertical shear and neck combination adolescence a dynamic hip screw is better than any cannulated screw right 
so follow these principles thank you very much so we'll take any questions now and as i said um, i will do the montagia talk for you again i'll announce the date probably this weekend or sometimes next week but i'll do that for you as the last talk i have some guests over i think i'll stop with this presentation today uh, i'll be happy to finish this with any questions ha huh, sandeep sir yes sir ha huh. i will not take much of your time because no no problem okay. go ahead sir we'll finish this talk uh, sir yeah i got three uh, small questions one was yes i am not against that removing the intracapsular blood to re release the tamponade effect but we are drilling yeah. the neck for uh, cannulated screws or uh, with the Correct. rimmer or Correct. the this thing Correct. can't that blood come out through that much enough blood yeah, so, or no so it, that's what i'm saying necessary. so it it has not been shown to be 100% full proof what i'm saying is that for completeness of your surgical procedure good reduction stable fixation evacuation of hematoma and additional stabilization with spica or thomas splint whatever is required depending on age are the four steps you should always like. remind yourself of like yeah. you said when you drill some amount of blood may come out through the fracture drill hole anything. itself yeah. okay or you can just pass a slide a small uh, jo uh, cobs elevator intracapsular and allow that to drain it's the same thing just get the hematoma evacuated of course you can yeah. get it through the same incision yeah another question uh, we, uh, you told about that injecting uh, that jolandro uh, 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 yes uh, for avian uh, yes. but will will that come out through the same uh, that cannula exactly so 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 putting so some bone block or something to block the uh, exit perfect question dr patil so what what you have to do is when you are if you are going to inject it through the screw hole if you are going to inject it if there, if there are two screws then you inject it through one screw and put your thumb and it has to be done with a syringe pump because you are trying to push that drug intraosseous it's not easy to give it like an injection which is iv so manually it is difficult to push it you have to put it on a syringe pump and at the most you will get 2 3 cc inside okay and okay. it has to be done slowly over 20 minutes so that it slowly gets bound to the avian area and okay. to, you to prevent the back flow as you rightly said you can put a bone plug or you can put your thumb but if you give okay. sufficient time then the drug binds to that area it is a binding agent it is a surface binding agent it is not really absorbed it stays there and it does not allow the osteoclast to resorb bone so it delays the collapse and allows revascularization and new bone formation that is the only role now the question is when you take oral medicine no how does it reach there yeah, so the when you have a avian and a collapse it's better to give it intraosseous or then you create a separate small drill hole and then give it under pressure again okay yeah uh, and again another you, question that is it is not a treatment it is to prevent collapse after that keep the child non weight bearing encourage range of motion reduce the stiffness and wait for that dense dead bone to get replaced by healthy looking bone over 4 to 6 months or a year then you reassess how much head is remaining for you how is the cartilage on it does she have one plane of movement and is rotation abduction block then you can consider uh, doing osteoplasty if more than 50% head is damaged cartilage is gone then you end up doing excision arthroplasty then you can't save the head okay then should it be protected by non weight bearing when spike yes yes so, yes non weight bearing after your zoolandric acid and range of motion exercises at least 3 months okay last question uh you talked about that chelectomy na that removal of bump yes. by a yes. surgical yes surgical yes uh, that you had uh, you had advised that trochanter to do epiphyseal desis or it was to prevent that abductor lurch uh no 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 when you do to. the safe surgical dislocation approach you have to take off the trochanter 
with the abductor and the vastus lateral is attached to it yeah yeah when you yes. reattach it you have to trim the top of the trochanter and distalize that fragment uh, that, what you, because of, it, for what for what for for what two two purposes one it tensions the abductors the tensioning of the abductors to restore the length of the abductors that improves okay. their limp second yeah abductor lurch uh -huh. yeah abductor lurch and second is when you have a more tensioned abductor it medializes the head further so it prevents it from subluxating okay so you are tightening up the abductor mechanism and when you bring it down you are causing a indirect lengthening of the neck so that is why it is called relative neck lengthening it's not true okay. lengthening you are not actually made it long okay, okay. if it you look not, at it is not for uh, uh, which prevention of hypertrophy of the trochanter or trochantic lengthening no 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 no, no nothing like that these are all adolescent like that. that trochanteric epiphyses actually we are taking oh. it out yeah if you get like a that. chance to see the surgery that when you do the sliver the top of the trochanter you have to remove it in line with the neck and then that piece you put yes. it down so that it looks like a longer neck oh sometimes you do like z plus z z incisions some to uh, what we call that double uh, 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 not in a single plane, two planes, trochanteric osteotomy. Yeah, but that true neck lengthening is something called as Morsher's osteotomy. Okay. So Morsher's osteotomy, you have two incisions, and then the shaft has to be lateralized. That is true yeah. neck lengthening. This is relative neck lengthening. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Any specific dose of zoleantric acid. you have the normal zoleantric acid injection which you use for osteo imperfecta okay so you take about mm. 10 cc in a syringe and put it on a syringe pump with great effort you will be able to get about 2 to 3 cc or 5 cc maximum you will not get more than that uh, can we repeat zoleantric acid if necessary yes it, it becomes additional invasive procedure and using an Uh, uh, zoleantric acid. There is no literature evidence for it. Okay, but we have to inject exactly at that spot where the AVN is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quadrant. You have to be in the dead bone. Dead bone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Can we do core decompression and BMAC? Do you mean BMAC? Is there evidence that it works? Yeah. BMAC and other things are a lot of it is industry driven. So if you want it, yeah, you can try all sorts of things. Core decompression, putting in stem cells, putting in whatever platelets. Nobody has shown hundred percent efficacy or proven that this works. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's more uh, com company driven than science driven. uh when you do abduction osteotomy uh, for uh, yeah. coxa vera or for this yeah. thing, then uh, the uh, do you put that dhs screw uh, in the physis means or yes. it should be away from the no no you are doing it for a non union which is usually going to happen in adolescent age groups if you are doing it in younger age group also when you have a non union your priority is to get union For that, you need adequate stability. So, crossing the physis is not a problem. Go ahead and cross okay. it. First, get it okay. to unite. Okay. Can distal radius plate be used as side plate? You can use anything that works. It is not that. Why specifically distal radius plate? If you feel the contour is something that matches, of course, and the direction of screws. Sir, good evening, sir. Intraosseous zoleantric works well in adults. Yes, there are reports that people have used it. In fact, uh, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal from Bombay has a paper which is published, which he uses a combination of IV zoleantric and oral bisphosphonate combination, and he says seventy percent efficacy in AVN in adults. So you should read that paper. 
सर या सर स्मॉल क्वेश्चन सर सर फॉर दैट सेमी ट्यूबुलर प्लेट यू आर यूजिंग एज ब्लेड प्लेट ना सर सो हाउ कैन यू क्रिएट दैट थ्रू सर स्लॉट सो यू यूज अ सिंपल 2.7 ड्रिल बिट सर ओके मेक थ्री पैरेलल ड्रिल होल्स लाइक इन वन लाइन देन यू यूज अ 5 एमएम ऑस्टियोटोम एंड मेक अ स्लॉट इन द नेक and check on ap and lateral by doing a frog leg and a ap view that your osteotome is in the center of the neck you are not going to anterior or to posterior completely small taps it's soft bone you can easily make those niches and then take that semi tubular plate in the straight position don't bend it it's straight and then that curvature exactly matches that so you keep it straight and hammer it straight so it will go into the bone and it will be sticking out like that then you bend it with your hand or with a screw driver to whatever angle you want bring the shaft and then put screws yes before that uh, you will fix that uh, reduction with caver sir multiple caver you have to no it is a plate reduction like you do plate reduction in forearm bones you fix okay. on one side no so you got purchase on the head and neck fragment Okay, okay. Then you are bringing the shaft fragment. It has to be done for subtrochanter fracture, no, or intertrochanter. Yes, sir. It is not to be used for intracapsular. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Sandeep yeah, sir. Yeah, Nitin sir. Yeah. Ah, uh, the uh, plate has to be flattened, na? The part which goes inside the neck. Yeah. Flattened. semi tubular no, you don't have to do anything the one third tubular plate for fibula perfectly fits you just make a slot and hit it straight it yes, will slot go will be a yes, slot will the be curve. linear but the plate will be little curved no semi tubular yeah but that's what i'm saying that that gives it its soft bone you try it you make drill holes you put a 5 mm osteotome okay. and then you put that one third tubular plate that slight curve gives it a good hold Okay, okay, ha. Huh. It will so go in very nicely. Curved plate in a straight, straight. Uh, curved yeah, plate in a straight slot. It's a slightly curved slot. plate in a straight slot, and straight that slot, slot is not made by. It is made by couple of drill holes and a small osteotome, and just loosen up the bone there like that. You are not really. It's not a sharp cut. Right. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Robert wanted to ask technique for fibula graft. Okay, so when you are doing the fibula graft. again you need first stability so you will put one screw and you have to decide which side are you going to put the fibula if there is a defect on the superolateral side i'll put the graft above if it's calcar defect i'll put it inferior okay so what you do is you have the dhs reamers don't use the outer reamer which is for the barrel use the inner reamer which is for the screw and over a guide wire just ream to the subcondral bone and most of the times when you remove the fibula of the arteriot length on one side just make it tapered like a bullet and the medullary canal of the fibula can be threaded over the guide wire and then you have a punch which is canted and then you punch the fibula in over the guide wire and then you remove the guide wire and then your screw is on the top then you put the barrel on the uh, screw and then you cut the bone in the subtrochanteric region and just bring it to valgus and translation so your blade plate the dhs is 135 okay so automatically it will become valgus you are not opening the fracture you are not removing fibrous tissue you are not doing open reduction it is in situ fixation but the osteotomy will make it 135 and that makes it compression huh? and that works really well so i i suggest you read the paper all right all yeah. right okay so uh, i will announce a date and i'll do the montagia fresh montagia and neglected montagia in a couple of days okay let's finish it by this weekend Sure, so sure. thank you very much for attending this session and i think thanks for allowing me to go thank you sir thank you very much good night oh, okay sir bye thank you thank bye you. bye 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 good night sir